Welcome to the Chicago Art Department, CAD TV, uh, Visiting Artist Series. Uh, I'm Nathan Peck, and I'm here today in the studio with my guest, Hans Breder. That, by the way, was a, a, a piece against Mayor Daly in Chicago. I, I shot into a, a mirrored cube, and that got a lot of attention. Uh, that's probably the, one of my best known pieces. <laughs> so I also do political work. <laughs> And I called it homage, homage to Chicago. Actually, if it hit on the gray uh, square, you would come to another page. And uh, on the gray. And there you have text again, which talks about the Mayor Daly exhibition in 1968, which was, I mean, uh, pretty intense. The, the, the meetings in Chicago, right. also, right. the Democratic Convention. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't think about that. But anyway, that's okay. Uh, yeah. and, and actually, what I just, uh, just since we are there, you know, I'm obviously, uh, we, we talked about this before, uh, live between languages, and I live between cultures. And I really think that has a lot to do with uh, why I became interested in these areas, these borders. And you see it in one piece, which came up briefly, I think, before, where, uh, I don't know if it was a per percussion piece, for example, uh, where we use our bodies as percussion instruments. And so the idea is to define uh, that space. The question is now, is this uh, uh, sculpture, is this dance? Is this music or is it pornography? And it's all of these things and none of these things. So I'm in, in that area, which is called liminality. And, the, and limen in Latin means threshold. So that is, that concept uh, came to me through Victor Turner, an anthropologist, but was originally used by Van Gennep, uh, a French sociologist, sociologist and uh, uh, but that's how it came to me in art, and I used it so, well, that, that is the, the, the red thread that goes to my work. So the languages are changing all the time, you know. For example, here, this is a translation, a recent translation of uh, 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 a piece that I did earlier with Anna Mendieta and, uh, and another uh, friend of ours in a creek. And uh, this is a reinvention. Actually, we have the real piece here. It's called, uh, 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 the original piece was called uh, Moon, Moon, Moonlight Sonata, and, and this is, uh, well, this is a, the, yeah, a resounding silence. And I took the sound out, you know. And, but it's, uh, anyway, so you see, this is a, a piece from 73, and and 2004. Now this is projected onto a, a, a sculpture. Uh, actually, a, a, a Khmer sculpture. And, uh, and uh, so again, it's performative. I'm projecting this earlier piece and I, um, I film it and that's it. Uh, uh, so there's no editing involved. So it's a question of setting it up and that's it. And the same way I work with performers, you know, we rehearse and then the best version I take. But, and, and why performance? Why, why the performative uh, uh, approach? Uh, I was editing a piece which had, deals with my life from 35 to 45 in Germany. And, uh, but it, I started actually deconstructing with a deconstruction of a, um, uh, Paul uh, was it Paul Celan? Uh, yeah, Paul Celan poem. And and while I was deconstructing this poem, I realized that I was substituting images which related to my own life. And then I decided, hey, you know, I this is about my life, and it became an autobiographical piece. Uh, what happens when the way I, way I work in video, which is these are some things that everybody's probably interested in, is that I. Uh, when I did some of these pieces, I played the uh, switcher. I did. I had one hand on the on the 
on the uh, sound switcher and one hand on the video switcher and I played it like an instrument. So what happens in this process? Uh, in, what happens is that my unconscious comes into being, you know, because I make decisions spontaneously. These are not constructed uh, edits, you know, these are spontaneous insights. And, and so I really was tapping my unconscious and this is really, of course, uh, also a key issue in, in all of my work is shifts in consciousness and that's why we have this word spirituality coming in, which is a, a, a strange word because many of you might think this has something to do with religion, but spiritual has nothing to do with religion, the way it's uh, uh, originally used by Kandinsky, the spiritual in art, concerning the spiritual in art was a book by Kandinsky and what, what, what it, in German it means das Geistige in der Kunst, so it means actually really shifts in consciousness. And that, uh, and that again goes back to the, uh, the notion of liminality I mentioned, that in between space, you know, between cultures, between. So that, and that space is called liminality by anthropologists. And basically in, rit in a ritual, for example, you move from one state of consciousness to another state of consciousness, but it's a space in between. So when I first thought about that, I thought of it as a membrane. And then this space became wider and wider and it became a space that I can live in because now I carry my home with me. I, you know, I don't, I, my home is, where I, this is my home right now, you know, and literally my home. And, and uh, if I wouldn't think about this way about life, I, I think I would a long time have done something, you know, like uh, drove my Porsche a little too fast and, uh, they had an accident, uh, or you know, there are several possibilities. But uh, but but I think you have to have uh, this space which is home, and part of it has to also do with that I lost my language. You know, I'm not speaking my language; I'm speaking somebody else's language. And so it's uh, between cultures, between languages. So that again, I think, brought me to this notion of intermedia. And I think what I did at Iowa was only possible at Iowa because these people uh, simply uh, uh, opened their doors for me and, uh, uh, and it was a question if I was successful or not and I was successful, particularly when I got half a million dollars. Right. <laughs> then, I, then, then I was very much loved. And I... <laughs> so, so just... Uh, you're, you're talking about liminality, and the, yeah. the, many of the images that, that pop up on the screen are from your website, and the website is called liminoid.com. Right. But can you give me just a little bit of, of, a, of, a dis, of an idea of what liminoid, as, as, as you see it, is? A, well, a, a lemon again is threshold, and liminoid sort of points into the future of the technology, uh, because I really think that there's more connection now with uh, the machine since you mentioned this border yeah. before than ever before, you know, right. I mean, uh, I think the technology that we're using now becomes much more an extension of our nervous system, and uh, that's how I think about it. And that's why it's liminoid. Okay. And, uh, and also it's a laboratory in which anybody can participate. We started in Iowa, developed some larger programs, you know, like this Mars in A minor I, I developed for Germany in, in this uh, laboratory situation with people from different with, with different backgrounds. But now I'm branching out. I just did a piece with somebody from Ball State, Donald Kaspitz, a critic, uh, a, a composer from Venezuela, uh, myself, and a performer from Iowa City. Right. And so the laboratory now doesn't have a, a wall anymore either, you know? So I got rid of the wall again. And now, you know, we're carrying this laboratory is also anywhere. So it's right now could be here. Yes, yeah, so if you put your hand out, does that, can, can, you, can you bless this with the liminality and, and, and allow uh, this to be I a liminal uh, uh, laboratory? I, I think experiment. that everybody has to hug me and feel my <laughs> energy <laughs> if they want to get something. I, I, I'm not into blessing, uh, uh, but uh, I'm into hugging. Okay, great, great. <laughs>